everyone. I'm Alana, and welcome back to IGN Live. I'm here with Steven, who is the game director on Project Cars 2. Hi, Alana. Tell us what's new this year. A lot. <laughs> Pretty much everything, actually. We have revamped virtually every aspect of the game. Uh, some areas more than others. Areas that we specifically focused on is first and foremost, what matters most to the gamers out there is the accessibility of it. How controllable it is when you play with a gamepad, because face it, whether we like it or not, most people out there still play racing games with a gamepad. So we need to make sure that right out of the box people have a pleasant experience playing it with a gamepad. And everything that fed into that pretty much came together because of the improvements we made in other areas of the game. A key improvement was in our tire model and how the power of the car feeds onto the track and how progressive the action of the tire itself is so that when you are in a um, position where the tires aren't just rolling and they're going sideways, that it's far easier to bring the car back again than it was before. And the mechanical underpinnings of the car itself as well, and then the way that we simulate the track surface, which is as important to get right as what it is to get the physics of a car right, has been dramatically um, enhanced as well. How do you start working on something like a track surface? Where does that This is a begin? very interesting <laughs> thing. We work very closely with a lot of real-world race drivers, and the one thing that they consistently, all of us, tell us is that you are constantly thinking about the environment and the effect that that has on your car, on the tires. The, amb the ambient temperature as well as the surface temperature affects the pressure of the air inside the wow. tire, which affects how much the carcass expands, which affects the size of your contact patch, how much grip you have while you're racing. And this is why it's so critical for us to get the whole environment simulation accurate and real as much as what we do with the physics simulation of it's the car. It's funny, there's so many things you guys have to think about that gamers don't even realize goes into it's a game crazy. Like It's crazy, it's crazy. People used to think we're loony because we simulate accurate movements of the celestial bodies in this simulation. Mm -hmm. But it's important because we simulate seasons, and when you're at a racetrack at a different time of year than what you were there before, the sun should be at an accurate and different angle, which in effect affects how the sun rays strike the track surface. So if you have an area that's in shade versus in sun, mm -hmm. that area will actually be cooler in the simulation mm -hmm. as what it would be in real life. And, and it matters because to a race driver out there, it affects how he approaches the race, how he schedules his pit stop, what tire changes he plans to do, and all of those little technical details. It's definitely a lot more complicated than it seems. So one thing it I really does, like yeah. about Project Cars is that you could basically customize even rolling weather patterns. There's a lot of things that you could do to yes. change basically the situation on the track. Uh, what's new this year? in terms of customization, how, how specific can we get? It is, it is, for us as a simulation studio, Slightly Mad Studios took on this gigantic task of being the best out there. And we keep on pushing the frontiers. And one area in which we do that is that while we already have the largest track roster of any game on console, we also have our dynamic everything on all of them. It's absolutely vital for us that the player needs to be able to practice what we preach anytime, anywhere. Go to any track in any car you want, set up any weather condition you want, and it works, including in 24-hour day-night light cycles, and including now, of course, doing full seasonal simulation. So we make sure that if you go to spa in winter, depending on what time of the year it is, it may just be dry trees like your typical winter, it may have been snowing. You may have a track area covered in snow, and all of that is dynamic and organic in the sense of that it is calculated, physics-based. It's not just a visual effect. The way, the way we do rain, for example, we calculate um, accurately how much waterfall comes from the air, how that saturates the ground, how that builds up puddles on the racetrack, how the puddles dissipate when the car drives through it, wow. and all of it is automatically there as an option for you across all tracks. So the player can go into a custom event and he can go set up different weather patterns. He can say, I'm going to have three races. At this race, it's going to be in autumn, this one in summer, this one in winter, and this one's going to be early in the morning, that one in the middle of the night, that. Over here, I want to have a thunderstorm progressing to a uh, blizzard, if he wants to be crazy. Mm. Over here, he can have like sunshine going into a light rain, and whatever combination he wants to do of all of these different things. And it just works automatically. When you're setting up things like weather, do you actually consult meteorologists or people who study weather patterns professionally we to make sure it's accurate? Do. We do. So in our simulation, the weather patterns will work correctly based on where in the world track is located, and depending on what time of the year it is that you visit that, whether it's in the southern or northern hemisphere, all of it is accurate. That's amazing. So how many tracks do we actually have? And so we have around countries? 60 core locations, and with layouts combined with that, it is uh, a, a much bigger amount than that. And then we have, um, car-wise, we have over 180 core v um, vehicles. So these aren't like just variations, mm -hmm. different 
textures or different team jobs on it. They are actually completely different models. Um, wow. 189 right now, I think we're at. Can you uh, list some of the fan favorites that we can expect? Wow, well, fans would be familiar with what we had already in Project Cars 1, of course. In Project Cars 2 now, we've added some of the key marquees that we missed in the first one. We were a new studio just starting out. It wasn't that easy always to negotiate and contract deals with people like Porsche and all that. Mm -hmm. And also, the Porsche license wasn't available to anybody else. Now yeah. it is. So we have all those key marquees in the, in the game now as well, like, like Porsche, like Ferrari. All of these key brands have come together now. And the ones that we had before, like McLaren, we now have their incredible new cars as well, like the 720p. S is now in the simulator as well, accurately reproduced, exclusive to us, and um, they are so happy with it because we've had their test driver who's, and the engineer who worked on the original car mm -hmm. work with us in the simulation to make sure that we do an accurate representation of their car in our sim. And they can, with happy heart, go and recommend to people, if you want to feel what the car feels like and you can't get to a showroom or afford that, go do it in Project Cars 2. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing, um, I know, with. Porsche, I'd heard that the reason that they didn't originally give anyone the license is because they didn't want any visual imagery of their cars being damaged. What is it like working with these massive manufacturers? It's, an, it's a very interesting experience, especially because we put different demands on the license agreements than, than any of the other guys out there do. For one thing, when we went to them in Project Cars 2 now, we would say part of the license agreement is we want access to your factory drivers. And it was like, well, this is, we don't do this. Mm. It's like, well, we want to make sure that we do an accurate representation of your vehicle in our sim. And the only way we can do that is by getting a positive sign off from the guy who actually is familiar with racing this car in real life. So that has been a very interesting thing. But because we take really good care of our partners and we make sure that we implement their products in our simulator to the best of our ability and we give an accurate representation of their products, visually, audio-wise, um, and of course how it handles. We've built up amazing partnerships. We have great relationships with the companies and they trust us even, as you can see, I think we're the only ones on the, on the showroom floor in this industry space showing proper damage. Yeah. And they're fine with that because we consistently illustrate that we do not go beyond what they would experience in real life. We don't. Um, it's always illustrated as a safe way of racing because the cockpit itself is not um, penetrated by anything, mm -hmm. but the damage on the car itself is there and it's realistic. And it was amazing. Initially, it was, of course, a big fight to get them to agree with this, but yeah. once they saw that they can really trust us with this, it's been amazing. So it's really good working with yeah. them, yeah. So you mentioned a couple of times there are a lot of other racing games on the show floor. We saw a lot of them at the press conference. What's the one thing that you really think makes Project Cars 2 stand out? Project Cars 2, uh, well, for us as a franchise, a key thing for us is always pushing the latest technology. We always want to be the, on the forefront, making sure that whatever new technology is released, we are the ones where people can go to, and this is where you find your cure for having spent money on this and not having anything to do with it now. Mm -hmm. You know, some people buy VR, people buy high-end monitors, people buy all of the stuff, and they don't really have anything to do with it. In Project Cars 2, we support a lot of amazing technology. Some of the other games in this industry space is now caught up by having 4K, we do 12K. Mm -hmm. We do um, detailed VR support. We have detailed widescreen monitor support, built-in tools to set up things like triple screen, where you can adjust things like bezel with monitor size, vertical offsets, all of those things. So first and foremost, we go into detail beyond what anybody else does. And secondly, the level of simulation that we do, mm -hmm. like it's nice to see some of the other guys now also do um, dynamic time of day and dynamic weather like we had in Project Cars 1, but we've moved on way beyond that, doing proper detailed physical physics-based simulation of all of this now. So it's actually totally organic versus what it was back then and what the other guys are doing. And those are just a few little points. So many other areas that we go into details. Um, silly example is being in VR and being able to get into a car and do what you would do in your car. The first thing you do is you adjust the mirrors mm -hmm. to suit yours and you can adjust the seat. And you can do all of these little tweaks because that's what you're used to doing in real life and now you can do that in the simulation as well. When you're driving along and, the, and it starts raining, the wiper speed, it's a, it's a little detail that people think is silly, but it matters because it breaks immersion when it's not right. The wiper speed will move depending on how hard it's raining. And the sound of the wiper will vary depending on if it's cold and it's icy on the windshield and you'll hear it squeak versus just <laughs> regular rain. All, all of those little details, we pride ourselves in that we nail all of that. So you're definitely an effective simulator. How easy is it for a new player or someone who doesn't necessarily know much about cars to pick up Project Cars 2 and play? This is a big challenge for a studio like ourselves who focus on heavy simu or, or in-depth simulation. But the one thing that we've learned 
based on the feedback that we've gotten from real world drivers and as well as our own experience in as being passionate racers ourselves is that real world motorsport is a thrilling experience. It's mm -hmm. like an extreme sport, right? Absolutely. It's not a boring, difficult, silly thing. The more accurate we can get the simulation, the more authentic we can get it to real life, the fallout from that is it becomes more fun, it becomes more accessible. Most people have driven cars in real life. They should be able to take the real world experience, transfer it into the sim and it should work. If it doesn't, if it's more difficult, then we're doing something wrong. Yeah. Okay. Now the reality is a lot of people play with game pads. As mm -hmm. I said in the beginning of our chat, it's just how it is. We would love for people all to play with steering wheels, but they have game pads and play with game pads. We didn't want to dumb down our physics. We didn't want to go and say, well, sure, go play with a game pad, but you're going to have a lesser experience. So our approach was, what if you were to take a real car, which you obviously can't change real world physics on, <laughs> rip out the steering wheel, put a game pad in there, and now figure out how you're going to drive this car with a game pad. Then we took this approach into the sim, and we said, no compromise in our physics, get it to work with the game pad, like you would in real world physics. And we spent a lot of time working on that. And again, uh, together with the technology that we've developed now with our significantly increased tire model, uh, the fallout of that is that right out of the box, the handling of the cars are far more approachable with a gamepad. Mm -hmm. But we also totally revamped our user interface. It's a complex simulator and there's a lot of content in there and we want people to easily be able to get access to the content that they just focus. So we've added things like a quick example is motorsport presets. What that does is, because we support so many different motorsports, and now in Korea they all set in championships, but now when you go to quick race, you just have a ton of tracks, ton of different cars, and you don't really know what. Now, if you only wanted to do a quick GT3 race, you can go in and select the pre a motorsport preset and just say, I want to do GT races, and it will automatically filter out all the other tracks that's not relevant to that motorsport. It will automatically only give you car options that are relevant to that motorsport. It will set up the rules and regulations and all of that for you. Sounds organized. <laughs> yep. So it makes it far more approachable for people who don't necessarily know all these little details about all these different car classes mm -hmm. and whatever may you, have, you may have. And then on the multiplayer aspect, this was something that was a very important thing for us to address. In Project Cars 1 and all of the other online multiplayer games out there that are very popular, you typically find people going out there to try multiplayer, all excited, and quickly abandon it because mm -hmm. inevitably there's some, if I may call it an idiot, <laughs> out there who <laughs> thinks the greatest idiot. one <laughs> out there is to drive backwards and wreck it for everybody, yeah. right? So what we did is we implemented a ranking system in Project Cars 2. What happens now is it monitors how you drive. It monitors how cleanly you drive, whether you cut the track or not, whether you bump into other cars, whether you do stupid things like driving backwards, and also whether you actually bother finishing a race instead of quitting because you're not winning. And then what this feeds into our matchmaking system. So over time, you will find yourself automatically match made with other people who are like-minded. So more and more, you will just have a better and better online experience instead of ending up in a, obviously you're going to have, the, you're going to find those idiots all being grouped together in a, in a nice destruction derby <laughs> game mode. But everybody else will have a great and wonderful online multiplayer experience and we're super excited to get that out there. Right, so when can we get our hands on Project Cars 2? 22nd September. Awesome. It thank you so, on, so much. All three platforms. All three platforms. That's yeah. super exciting. Thank you so much for joining us, Stephen. Alana, thank you for having us. Thank you. Stay right here on IGN Live.